So this is a 2017 C-Max uh, E-Energy Titanium. And what I was looking at was the plate, plate heat exchangers. And I wanted to know what, what cooling loops that they have here and what are glycol. So as you're looking here, you're looking at a glycol system here. And I cannot see inside this box. I don't know what's in it, but I'm pretty sure it's a plate heat exchanger. As you see, this is a glycol loop. This is a water pump and it comes out at the top you can see right here both these lines as it goes through the water pump it takes off going towards down the frame rail going back towards the back of the car so I don't get to see where it's getting its cool water supply or hot water supply whatever it needs but we do see there's high voltage here and I think it says it's 300 308 volts 4.4 kilowatts so we know we have the possibility of producing a lot of heat and they need to get rid of that heat and the most efficient way is using water so they're using water now I'm wondering if this goes around and comes around the other side where I can't see it because we have glycol loop system right here here's a glycol loop glycol loop or or it could be a their drivetrain loop for uh, like tranny fluid but this is definitely glycol loop here glycol loop here so there's a plate heat exchanger on the top right here and then there's another uh, not plate heat exchanger a heat exchanger here a heat exchanger here for these two loops coming this in this direction one of them goes up to right here to your inverter up here so this has produces a lot of heat when you're driving or charging you got a lot of heat to dissipate so you got your plate heat exchanger going down there the other one goes into what looks like the transaxle or you know right these two guys right here these ones right here they're going into a block right there where my tip of my finger is pointing is the nut and uh, they're going in right there. So that's where they're dissipating heat from. But I can't see where, and I don't see a pump. There's no pump on this side. So for the fluid to flow, there has to be a pump involved. So is this lower heat exchanger part of this over here, and this is the pump for it? I don't know because I'm trying to look for the pump. These can have pumps in so many places, it gets pretty ridiculous. This is an electric compressor on here, which you can see the orange wire going to it. It's right there. We can barely see it. Let's see if I can zoom in. Right there on top where you see those wires going in, that is part of the electric compressor, right? Buried down inside there. looking at it right there part of it the casing and here's the liquid line discharge right here from the condenser here's the discharge of the compressor uh, hot vapor and this is the liquid line coming out of the compressor and it is going and following and you see the tube going right under this tank right here and you see the suction line get really fat so you know that's an internal heat exchanger and somewhere just out of view down here this liquid line that little line you see down there this is the suction line they meet up and join in a block right under that orange connector we can't see it and that's where they meets up and it travels inside that heat exchanger and it goes around back to the evaporator and expansion valve and comes back out to help subcool some more very tight space on this one a lot of heat exchangers and I have not seen one of these up in the air and the rear panels taken off or the battery inside I have not read up on this one to see how they are dissipating the heat of the battery packs are they using air are they using glycol on this Ford C-Max uh, I have not caught up on this one and these will be hitting the aftermarket as they get out of warranty and extended warranties everybody's going to start seeing these in general repair shops so get ready and uh i think i have another 
one over here. Let's see. That one's not ready yet. That one was a little damage on the condenser up below. This one might get totaled, but no, that one might not get totaled. And not ready yet. Oops, sorry. Not ready yet. And this one he is waiting for. Oh, I, this was a good customer. Did him last year and uh, he got in an accident again and gonna have to take this apart and do it again. Always like return customers. Uh, not ready yet. Okay, so that was on that. But I, I just want you guys to see where some of these glycol loops because part of your cooling is not just refrigerant. It's going to be on the movement of glycol. And you have to know and able to be able to diagnose the electric motors, which any guys who work on Priuses already have a lot of experience if they're in a shop that does Priuses. But still, these are a mystery to a lot of guys in general shops. I have shops that refuse to take um, hybrid vehicles. They won't work on hybrid vehicles. They're old school and they don't want to touch them. Maybe they touched one or two and they said they had really expensive mistake because they didn't know what they were doing. And um, yeah, reading is very important. And going to seminars, going to webinars, going to expos is very important now. If you want to stay up on the game, you have to pay in time, in effort, and money to keep up in this industry. Otherwise, you're going to be hurting. All right, I'll see you guys. I got to recharge this one now.